Last weekend, the final leg of the OEO Fest took place in Toronto after a week delay due to Drake getting COVID. Now, the Young Money reunion was the first time Drake, Nicki Minaj, Lil Wayne took the stage within the last five years, where they performed many of their hit songs such as The Motto, Truffle Butter, Trophies, and brought out new artists such as Smiley and Skillabang. Now, I don't believe Skillabang is signed right now, but Skillabang is an artist known for the song Crocodile Teeth, where it goes wap, 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 wap on a dog grind me. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, all my Jamaicans know what's going on. But anyways, man. Now, Smiley was someone widely criticized by his rapping style as people were jumping on his neck over a song over the top featuring Drake where people thought he was very undeserving of a Drake feature. Now, a Drake feature is something given to an elite few. And people who have gone this feature have had a massive launch of success in their musical career. A prime example of this is the Memphis rapper Block Boy JB on the song Look Alive where his streams after that song with Drake had skyrocketed. So the real question is, who is the next Drake coming from OVO Sound? Well, this question has no simple or direct answer, as there are many young artists who love to sing and can rap, but will still not be as big as Drake. Now, to get this off started, we're going to analyze the people on the OVO record label. Now, the OVO Sound label currently has seven artists assigned to it. Party Next Door, DBSN, Magic Jordan, Roy Woods, Pop Can Music, Baka Not Nice, and the latest edition, 61st Smiley. Let's start off with Smiley, the future OVO prodigy. Now, Smiley has a unique rapping style that many don't take serious. However, it's a different style of rapping, and this is what Toronto music actually sounds like. The same way how Atlanta rappers like Young Thug rap a certain way and it's accepted is the opposite for Toronto music because it just doesn't have a wider audience appeal to many people. Now, oftentimes, artists have to travel and be appreciated somewhere else like America before they're embraced by their own people and their own country. Now, we saw this with Drake when he first entered the rap industry, before he was referred to as the grassy boy, and people had a hard time taking him serious as a rapper, until he signed with Lil Wayne's Young Money Records in 2009. Through hip-hop music, we've always seen a pattern string of events, such as big artists co-signing new artists, who eventually blow up, and then they pass the torch. Now, we saw this with Jay-Z when he reached his peak, and he started bringing Kanye around with him on tour because he wanted to become a rapper. Now, during this time, Kanye West was strictly a producer at Rockefeller Records, However, he's around Dame Dash and a lot of other artists and had aspirations to rap. Now, the cycle of giving back continued with Kanye West as he did the same thing with Kid Cudi when he was coming up in his career and brought him out in his earlier shows to perform. And we saw this in abundance when it came to Lil Wayne, who took a chance on the six guard Drake by giving him a spotlight while he was the biggest in his career. And he still is, of course, while he was on tour, giving him money to find his rap career. And we saw Drake singing him all the praises during this OBO Fest at this weekend. It's impossible for every record label to have an artist who is as major, major mainstream as Drake, but Young Money Records is an exception. With help with Lil Wayne, Drake and Nicki Minaj were able to start solo successful careers. Now personally, I feel like Lil Wayne's greatness and rapping ability gets overlooked and overshadowed a lot of the times due to the side antics and shenanigans that he somehow gets himself involved in. But what's understood doesn't need to be explained. So the real question for today is, will the cycle be repeated with another big time Canadian? rapper. Now the Canadian R&B duo division is definitely one of the front runners for this position. With their latest song, If I Get Caught, which talks about a whole scandalous relationship and cheating and other things of that nature, with the main chorus saying, if I get caught cheating, that don't mean I don't love you. And this is the peak of toxicity. Future will be proud to say the least. Now this group consists of Daniel Daly and producer 1985. The crew is featured on Drake's Summer 16 tour and has been ranked on the Billboard due to their feature on Faithful, which is one of Drake's songs from his Views album. The group has three albums with the OVO Sound label, September 5th, Morning After, and Amusing Their Feelings. The most notable album is Amusing Their Feelings, which was a top five R&B album on the Billboard charts. I really think this duo could be as big and maybe bigger than Brent Fias. However, they just gotta keep putting out music and performing in different cities to expand and widen their audience. This is a problem I find with a lot of artists from Toronto who are actually very talented. They kind of stay in their city so much that they get buzzed in their city and eventually dies down because they don't move and relocate to places that need to hear them. Now the next artist is Party Next Door, someone who is a household name to many, especially by the success of the song Not Nice, which was a viral and hot song in 2016 from his album Party Next Door 3. One pattern I find with Drake, it seems like all the artists signed to his label must have a decent ability to sing. I'm not sure if it's because he wants them to look versatile on his songs and make it look good for the label, or he respects the singing aspect of music over the rapping. Now there's a certain cadence when it comes to singing that just makes it so much better than rapping. Now Party Next Door's career definitely isn't a flop by any means, but many people have had higher expectations for him 
based on him being signed to arguably the greatest rapper of all time, and by him having co-signs for many bigger artists, with his most recent hit song being Loyal, featuring Drake and Bad Bunny. The connection of Drake is worth more than any record deal any of these artists could have gotten because opportunity is always worth more than money. The Bad Bunny feature is something that was only made possible through the Drake connection. Even though Drake may not be on a lot of the songs released by the artist, he still lends a helping hand with connection and creativity by allowing his resources to benefit his artists. Now the next artist is Roy Woods, someone who I consider at the forefront of the OVO record label, of course under Drake, as he signed with OVO back in 2015. His song Jealousy from his 2015 Exodus EP threw him in a spotlight because the EP performed very well, landing him the 10th spot on the Billboard US R&B Hip Hop charts, and even had Drake doing a feature for him dating all the way back to 2015 on the song Drama. And I'm guessing this is probably where Drake realized he was legit and wanted to sign him to OVO. So Popkin is the next member of this OVO label, with heavy Jamaican roots of course. His most recent appearance included the Kingston Musical Festival, which from the looks of social media was very poorly organized. Popkin is a Jamaican dancehall singer out of Portmore, Jamaica, who signed to OVO Sound in December of 2018. And Drake was a major feature on his recent album Fixed Tape, which actually had songs called Twisting and Turning, featuring Party Next Door. We've seen this before with other labels like Quality Control in Atlanta, where they make songs together with multiple artists on the song to increase their chemistry and make the label stronger through collaboration with artists like Migos, Lil Baby, Lil Yachty, and there's much more. Majid Jordan is another Canadian army duo consisting of a singer and producer very similar to Division. This group has the most history with Drake, dating back to September of 2013 when they're part of his hit song early in his career, Just Hold On, We're Going Home, arguably one of his earliest hits in his career. They are still signed to OVO Sound, with their latest tour being the Wildest Dreams Tour in 2021. They seem to not release a high volume of music, and it seems to go in the more quality or quantity look. However, they were the first to sign to OVO Sound back in 2013, proving their veteran status in the Canadian R&B game. Now, Smiley and Baka Not Nice are the last two artists of the OVO Sound label. Baka put out Live Up To My Name in the summer of 2017, which is basically the summer anthem to many people. This is at every club, casino, party, and any event in the summertime. He put out an album in 2018, but since then he's been very silent. Baka Not Nice was the most silent and least active rapper from OVO Sound. Now to many people, it's looking like Baka was a one hit wonder, which I also believe, because after his hit song Live To My Name, no more music was released that was really a hit or went viral that even elevated his audience. And we saved the best for last. Now Smiley is the artist I feel under Drake's wing will actually grow, and sure his voice may be different, but different sells and creativity kills. He's worked with other Toronto artists such as Doovie and the Drake feature on Over the Top, and he has everything to gain in the music industry. 